You are listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby of Torch in Houston, Texas. This is the Parsha Review Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Parsha Review Podcast. I know this podcast is coming late, but this is last week's Torah portion, Parshas Korach. In Korach, we learned something really amazing, is that Korach was a very righteous person. He was a holy person. He was a gifted Torah scholar. And yet, he fell to a terrible, terrible tragedy. A terrible, terrible tragedy where he was jealous of Moshe, jealous of Aaron, questioned their leadership, and it resulted in his unfortunate death by God, by the hands of Hashem. Where Moshe says, Hashem, if you don't like what he's doing, you're going to have to kill him in a supernatural way. And indeed, that's what happened. We know that Korach, the ground opened beneath him. He and 250 of his followers all fell. Now, it's very interesting that when the verse tells us, and this is in chapter 16, verse 1, Vayikach Korach ben Yitzar ben Kohaz ben Levi, when Korach took, who was Korach? Korach, the son of Yitzar, the son of Kohaz, the son of Levi, Vidasan Vavriam ben Aliyah, and Dasan and Aviram, the children of Aliyah, Veon ben Peles, ben Ruvain, and On ben Peles from the tribe of Ruvain. Say, just tell us, why is it important? They ask, why is it important for us to mention all the descendants that they're from the children of Levi and they're from the children of Reuven? So the first thing we can just point out, it says, Vayikach, he took, he took his words. Words are very, very powerful. Great influence in our words, the words that we use, which is why the, our sages implore upon us to use nice words. We see this in the Torah. The Torah doesn't say an animal which is filthy. It says an animal which isn't pure. It doesn't say a, a, an animal which is tame, but rather asher enena tahora, that which is not tahor, which is not pure. Because the Torah exercises what it teaches, which is use clean words. The words we use have an influence on us. Korach used words to influence people. What did he use them for? To influence them in a negative way, to go against the will of Hashem. So what happens? It, then it says that Korach was from the from the tribe of Levi. And where was On Ben Pelas from? He was from the tribe of Reuven. Why is that important? Which tribe they're from? Sages tell us something very, very important. Rashi points this out. And that is that every person we meet has an influence on us and every influence has an impact we know today we're in a world of influencers influencers whether it be on social media on a tiktok on instagram on facebook on twitter and x there are influencers out there and they have a power of influence korach was the first influencer and he had an influence for the negative say just tell us that the the tribes that camped near Korach around the tabernacle, those tribes were influenced negatively by Korach. And those tribes that were next to Moshe and Aaron became very righteous scholars. Why did they become righteous scholars? Our sages tell us because they were next to Moses and Aaron. When you lived next to Moshe and Aaron, you got influenced in a very positive way. When you lived next to Korach, you got influenced in a very negative way. And that's why the tribe of Yisachar and Zavulun, who were right next to where Moshe was and Aaron was, they were influenced positively. The tribe of Reuven, where Onmen Palace was from, was next door neighbors to Korach. They were influenced in a negative way. Sages tell us that we have to place a tremendous emphasis on our influences that we allow ourselves to be influenced from. We know, by the way, how is something that's put into the refrigerator cooled off? It's cooled off because it's in an environment that everything is cold. And it has this effect that everything that's in that environment gets cold. You put something in an oven, the oven becomes hot. Everything that's in it becomes hot. So too, if you're in a, an environment where people speak Lashon Hara, what happens? You start speaking Lashon Hara. You start speaking negatively about others. If you're in an environment where people are saying positive, nice things about other people, you learn to do that as well. I have a very good friend of mine who started working in a company that had a very good influence, a good positive environment where people give charity, they give tzedakah, and people speak nicely, and people always find favor in other people. 
and I realized a transformation where now his way of speaking, the way he talks, the way he interacts is much more positive than it was previously in his previous pl- place of work. So we see that there's a tremendous power and a tremendous inf- influence. So I want to share with you a quick story. There was a, a man who raised a family after the Holocaust. After the Holocaust, we have to understand that what was left after, there was maybe one person who survived in every community living, and there was maybe one who stayed religious. It, it was very far, few and far between those who actually survived physically and those who survived spiritually. And this man raised a very, very big family, very special family, all Torah observant. And he was once commenting to his rabbi why he thinks he merited to have a big family with all his children and grandchildren growing in the way of Torah. We see that there was a tremendous, tremendous growth of secularism after the Holocaust, where Jews said, well, I want nothing to do with this. But here, this person's family not only stayed committed to Torah, but really Torah scholars that were very, very committed to their Jewish life. He says that his great-grandfather, prior to the Holocaust, left in his will a request that he wants his children and his grandchildren to always live in a religious community. That was what he asked him, live in a religious community. Why? Because when you live in a religious community, you're influenced by the positive forces of that community. And that is what he he did. He f- took from what his father and his grandfather left as his inheritance. What was that? A message. Stay in a Jewish environment. Stay in a holy, pure place. We see this also in the fifth chapter of ethics of our fathers in Pirkei Avos, Perikei, what does it say? It says that a person should always be in an environment of good people. And it says that if someone comes to the rabbi and asks the rabbi, Rabbi, come live in our community, live where we live, be part of our community, the rabbi shouldn't go. Why? Because if you're going to their place, you could be negatively influenced. But if you bring them to your place, then they'll be positively influenced. We have to learn to be in a good environment. We talk about this many times in our classes, not only in the Parsha podcast, in the Jewish Inspiration podcast. We talked about the, about this in the Thinking Talmudist podcast. The importance of having a positive influence. If we allow ourselves to be in a place that has negative influences, we will be negatively affected by it. It's the place where we live, but it's also where we visit. We go to the mall. We'll be influenced by the mall's influences. We go to Vegas. What is Vegas? Vegas is called Sin City for a reason. We think we're not influenced. Of course, we're influenced by it. Not only that, we're online. Everybody, almost, I don't know how many billions of people carry with them every single day a cell phone you know what a cell phone is cell phone at your fingertips you have either the greatest influences or the worst influences on our phones in our pockets every single day it doesn't mean that a phone is a bad thing a a phone can be a an unbelievable positive influence but it can also be very damaging and that's something that we need to be very very careful about to ensure that we're always in a good environment, that we're always having a positive influence around us and to protect ourselves and to create protective measures for ourselves and our children. Just because we're grown adults doesn't mean that we're not influenced by things. We are just as much as our children are. Hashem should protect us all. Hashem should protect us and save us from the influences of those who are negative, those who are taking us away from the will of Hashem. Hashem should always protect us and put us in the right place. By the way, this is something we pray for. We pray for this. We pray that our children shouldn't be influenced by other negative forces. We talk about this. We pray for this in our prayer at the end of the Amidah. There are those who say, don't put me among those who speak slander. 
Don't put me among those who are mockers, who laugh at other people. Don't put me among those who are doing negative things. We ask for this in our prayers at the end of the Amidah. We also at the end of our morning blessings. Don't put us around negative influences. Hashem should protect us all, that we should always be among those who do good and those who are positive influences on us. And hopefully for us and for our children, we will go in the right ways, the ways of Hashem. Thank you and have an amazing Shabbos. You've been listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby on a podcast produced by Torch, the Torah Outreach Resource Center of Houston. We need you. We need partners. Please help sponsor an episode so we can continue to produce more quality Jewish content for our listeners around the globe. Please visit torchweb.org to donate and partner with us on this incredible endeavor.